Okay, well, we just got back from the track. We were at Putnam Park Road Course in Greencastle, Indiana this past weekend with the LVA GT350R behind me, testing out a few new LVA products. Well, we have the OEM GT350R splitter behind us. Uh, this will be its second track weekend in testing. We've had no issues with it so far. Something that is unreleased, but should be coming to you guys soon are our SFI rated five point racing harnesses, which I'll show you in the car in just a second. Now. While we were at the track, we didn't do too much talking to the camera, pretty much just kind of shot some B-roll, filmed a few of the lap times, some GoPro angles, some of the uh, Garmin Catalyst footage with the data overlays as well. So without further ado, hope you enjoy the video. Just like that, we are back at Putnam Park for the second event of the year. This is also gonna be the second event for the LVA Shelby GT350R since it had its new engine cooling setup and differential put in by Ford Buffalo Motorsports. So let's get into it. Uh, Jordan's gonna be riding with me for the warm-up laps. Um, in this session, it was his first time on track in a car. Um, so we actually brought him back in before going out for the, uh, the hot lap to try to set the new PR. So we're gonna go ahead and get up to the starting line here. Here, as you can see, we're strapped in with the new LVA five-point racing harnesses, which I'll go into more detail about a little bit later on in the video. Just waiting for the go-ahead to get out on track, which it looks like we got. And uh, we're gonna do a little time lapse through some of the, the warm-up laps here. Those slicks do take five, six laps, depending on the ambient temperature, to get um, up to temperature and uh, max grip levels. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these warmed up. And then, looks like I got the signal here, we dropped him off, and here we go, across the starting line to start. This is going to be that the 114.7 PR at Putnam so far. Coming into turn one, uh, really focusing on braking a little bit deeper and getting that downshift done earlier for the turn in. So we're getting a little bit deeper into turn one, making that angle a little less shallow. Um, coming into two, getting a little squirrely. Uh, the slicks tend to let go without any warning, so you gotta be careful. Really wanted to focus on carrying more speed around three here and getting out a little bit wider earlier. Um, coming into this turn, just braking a lot later, turning in, making it less shallow. That's been a, a tricky corner for me since the beginning. Um, coming up here to seven, very, very shallow uh, turn, even taking it at 50 something miles an hour, feels like you're doing 10. So we're coming up again, just making sure uh, I had the gearing right. I think I left it in third for this one. I'm just trying to squeeze out as much power as possible. Always looking up the hill out to the outside. And as we approach the last two corners, um, I noticed the uh, the delta on the Garmin was showing almost a half a second gain over a previous 115, so I was pretty excited. Then we come into the last corner, uh, turn 10 here as we approach the straight. Again, you can see that delta showing almost a half a second. And then across the line with a 114.73, which is a new personal best there in London Park. Okay, well, that is how some of the track footage went. Um, as you saw, we ran a 114.73, which is extremely fast for that car. The last track event, we were hitting the high 117, so to shave almost three seconds off that time was a great outcome. Couldn't be happier with how the weekend went. But now that we're back, it's a good time to kind of show you the, uh, the new liquid vinyl race trailer, as well as the condition of the car when it comes back from the track day. So why don't you go ahead and come on in? All right, so this is our new race trailer. Picked this up about a week before the event. Um, everything you see here is how it came. Fully finished on the inside, there's diamond plate floors, uh, spare tire compartment, we've got um, storage cabinets up top, a whole bench, a 3,500 pound winch, um, lights, bottle holders, pretty much everything that you can imagine. As we come down here um, towards the back, we went ahead and chucked our race ramps under the back side uh, to make the, the angle a little bit better to pull up some of these cars. Works out really well, super happy with the trailer, and uh, in those hotter months when we hook up a generator and get that AC pumping, it's gonna be a really good time on the weekend. So, what does the car look like now that we're back? Well, as you can imagine, 
a weekend at the track is going to uh, put a little bit of abuse on your vehicle, not just mechanically, but also visually. And uh, this is what you're gonna be expecting when you come back. We did not run the car in the rain this weekend, so this is kind of just a dry scenario. It was clean when we, when we showed up to the track. But as you can see on the front, we've got tons of bugs, um, tons of tire marks. You're gonna find you know, little pieces of rubber, kind of like this, um, you know, all over the car, up in the wheel wells. So that stuff splattered all over. As you guys know, we've had our OEM GT350R specific splitter on this car now for, this will be its second track event. Um, with that said, it is a belly pan mounted splitter. We are still developing and tweaking our chassis mount kit to work on the GT350 and GT350R platforms. Uh, with that said, belly pan mount has been fine so far. We put this thing through a lot of abuse, um, ran it over track curbing, um, the whole kind of bottom of the edge trims rubbed off there from the curbing, no issues there. Um, we hit about 130 to 135 um, on the straightaways. Again, no issues, no flapping. Definitely uh, have some functional downforce in the front to counteract that big APR 72 inch wing in the back. Um, additionally, one other thing I wanna to touch on here are these, again, unreleased but coming soon, carbon fiber V2 rods. Um, these are, you know, we bring these in in house, source all the parts and uh, ship them out accordingly and they're gonna be on the site as well. So I think right now we have anodized black, blue, red, gold, and purple on the site, but we, uh, we've really been having a lot of requests for a carbon fiber finish. So this isn't a fake carbon fiber, it's not a, a faux carbon fiber kind of look. It is a real um, carbon fiber tube, extremely strong. I can't even break these things over my leg. So um, I'll show you some detail shots there. But again, splitter did amazing. Please disregard any uh, little dents or divots in it. I unfortunately pulled it a little too far forward on top of our trailer tie downs and put two little dings on the underside. So this guy's gonna be getting a new one here shortly. Um, but yeah, no complaints with the splitter. Did fantastic and uh, definitely contributed to that new personal best there at Putnam Park. Another thing that was uh, very different this weekend, it was our first time uh, running these Pirelli DHB uh, racing slicks. Now we had ran on some Hoosier R7s in the past, uh, probably did about three or four days with those guys. And unfortunately on Saturday this weekend, we corded pretty much all four of them on the outer edge. Uh, I'm not sure if the pressures were off or camber settings or whatnot, uh, but luckily we had a set of four of these takeoff slicks. These actually came from a Ferrari, I think it was a 458 or 488 uh, challenge car. These are the 315 705 uh, 19 millimeter, or sorry, 315 705 19 inch Pirelli slicks. Uh, DHB compound, we had them thrown on the OEM carbon fiber wheels here. Originally, with such a thick sidewall, I was a little bit concerned that we'd run into some rubbing and clearance issues, but quite frankly, with the, I think we're running negative 3.3 degrees camber in the front, there's no issues um, with the fender clearance and actually no issues with the strut clearance on the inside. The only thing that we experienced was a little bit of uh, rubbing on the fender liner at full lock, but hey, you know, it's a race car. Don't really have it at full lock that much, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, Kind of walk around and we'll show you some of the other tires. Uh, some of them did get pretty heavily abused. A lot of melting, a lot of wear. Um, some of the Falcons actually ended up de-beating, or not, not de-beating, but delaminating. Um, so we're gonna have to talk to Tire Rack and Falcon about that and see if we can get some replacements sent out. But overall, super impressed with these guys. Once they were hot and at the right temperature, um, I've never experienced that much grip. They were fantastic, and I don't think we could have achieved that 114.7 uh, time without these tires right here. Here's the main new thing that we were testing out this weekend. These are unreleased um, five-point racing harnesses uh, that we had made specifically for us. Now, this is something that we're going to be bringing to the website, so I wanna give you kind of a brief rundown of what the overall situation is with these harnesses. So as you can see, um, this is a red finish. We had a custom fully embroidered LVA patch um, put on not one, but both of the shoulder harnesses here. So we'll do different variations of colors and designs, but for now it's kind of a geometric camo with the red LVA to match the red harness as well. Moving down, one key thing to note, um, you know, any racing harnesses, it's a safety item. You wanna make sure that it's safe for you, uh, passengers, anyone else who's gonna be in the car on track. That's why we made sure that these are SFI rated. Um, any racing sanction is gonna have, you know, different expiration dates or different requirements for that, but they are a 16.1 SFI rating. Um, these happen to have a expiration date of December of 2024. Moving down, 
Uh, we chose to go with more of a cam lock kind of style versus the manual style. So as you can see here, um, all you would have to do to exit the harness is just twist this, uh, this cam lock and all of the harnesses will pop out. And then the reverse is true to, to clip back in. You just clip them in like a seatbelt, super fast, super easy, uh, no headache really when it comes to that. Um, moving backwards, as you can see, any harness like this, you're really gonna wanna make sure that it's mounted to a proper um, either roll cage, roll bar, harness bar, something like that. So we have this one mounted up to a Watson Racing four point rear half cage. And then we have the excess um, collars are actually wound up with a Renscott um, harness collar. So that's gonna you know, alleviate the, the need to use zip ties or anything like that. Makes it a lot cleaner back there on the cage. So again, not currently for sale on the website. Um, we're still working with the manufacturers. We, we bring these in, we don't make those in the house. Um, once we have our colors and options and you know, inventory and stuff like that figured out, we'll bring a bunch in here, throw them off on the site, and then uh, you guys can use them as well. One more thing to note before I, I jump off my horse here talking about the harnesses are um, any really racing harness of any kind, unless it's a, an ASM or four point, not really meant for street use. You know, it looks cool, kind of strapped into your car. If you're not wearing a Hans device and you know, helmet and proper safety gear, you can actually injure yourself worse in a street accident with these. So these are really gonna be meant for uh, track use only or competition use. So keep that in mind as well. It is a serious setup, it does have serious consequences if you don't use them correctly. So keep an eye on the Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the social media, even the website uh, for the release of these guys. Hoping in the next month or so, but as you guys know, you know, lead times, estimates, those can always change. So those are the LVA five point harnesses. Once you get the car back, what we're gonna do today or tomorrow, get everything washed down, kind of get it reset uh, for the next event. But as you can see, got a you know relatively shiny car, no big dings, scratches, crashes, uh, nothing like that, and a new personal best lap time. So all in all, very happy with the weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, we'll be posting hopefully more regularly as the uh, summer continues. All right, see you on the next one. Thank you